Well, this is a pretty exciting one because we are in my new shed. So yeah, this is pretty exciting. I have moved a lot of my stuff into the new shed here, but it's not all here. It's still pretty echoey in here. I don't have my hoist yet. The concrete's still got to get ground. And so yeah, there's a lot to do here, but that's all just going to sort of happen over time. The more immediate job that we've got to do is get a few more things ready for engineering on this thing. So currently you can see that the exhaust on the GU is dumping on the passenger side. Now that is illegal. So there's a few laws surrounding exhausts on a vehicle and I'll let you know as best as I know as per my engineer and that is you are not allowed to have exhaust dumping on the passenger side you are allowed to have your exhaust as stacks at the back of the car or the driver's side in a ute it's got to be 400 mil from the nearest entrance to the vehicle and on a wagon it's got to be 400 mil from the last seam seal of the vehicle this also does not have a silencing device just yet and so i'm going to put a hot dog in as well essentially it's going to come from under the cab just there come up here around the sub tank and then out here like this and I'm gonna have this hot dog just here. And so I'll show you one more cool reason why we're changing that exhaust. This here is two Megalife batteries. They are the MV31R and they are going to be the 24 volt touring slash winching setup for this car. They are the size of a standard battery, except they only weigh 12.8 kilos. To put that in perspective, the AGM 24 volt batteries in the GQ are 30 kilos each. And so that's 60 kilos of batteries under the GQ tray, which is good. That car loves a bit of weight, but with this one having like a half canopy on it, I want to keep the weight down. I loved having lithium in the GQ. No matter how flat the batteries get, you're running it over 13 volts. And they just seem to hold their charge a lot better for a lot longer. And the final main reason why I chose these batteries is they have 2400 cold cranking amps. Now that's 1800 main and then 600 reserve. I was a bit skeptical of lithium to start with, but one of my good mates, Dan Kistler, he got these about a year ago in his wagon and he's also run them in the comp truck for a little while and he swears by them. And he did a really cool comparison of AGM versus versus lithium and he actually gained a few seconds on a winch just by having lithium over AGM. And yeah, I've looked all over the market and I can't find another brand that offers this much CCA and also stands by the fact that they will handle 24 volt winching. And so yeah, really proud to be running these batteries and I'm super keen to get them in the car. Let's go for a quick drive and see how loud it is in the cab at the moment with that little side dump exhaust with no muffler or anything and no sound deadening. That's pretty noisy. Especially when that wastegate opens. Apologies for the shaky camera, if that's shaking around. I wanted to use my good mics for this. And so yeah, I'm using my good camera. So I've just got it kind of sitting on the dash. But yeah, so that's first. To two and a half. So yeah, it'll be good to compare that once we do all the work. This used to have a complete exhaust except to get the to get the bend over the back diff the previous owner actually notched out the coil brace and so this here is the piece that used to go over the back diff and i just kind of cut it up and made a side dump out of the pieces you can see my old crappy welds there but yeah so all we're gonna do is go from this flange here and then make a new system to dump out the other side and i still don't have a workbench yet <laughs> So 
So now we want this bit going up like that, but that's too long at the moment. I actually want it hugging the cab like that just to leave plenty of room out in here for those batteries. And so I might get under there and get a mark and then we can chop this one. So that's pretty much sitting in the center of it all. And we want that sitting about there, I think. So I think I've shown it before, a bandsaw would be nice. I'm still keeping an eye out on Facebook Marketplace, but if you want a square cut around something like this, I usually just use a piece of masking tape and just wrap it around, see how they don't meet. It's not perfect, but it gets pretty close. And so now I'm just gonna cut on this side of the tape all the way around and it should be fairly close to square. So just holding that up needs a little bit off this side as I clean it up. And so I'm gonna unbolt that from where I mocked it up. I'm gonna clean up these burrs here and take a little bit more off this side and then we'll come and bolt it back up and tack it in. another bend going along the side of the sub tank there. So I think we'll tack that on there. So you don't want it banging on that, you don't want it banging on that, and you don't want it banging on this. And so I kind of want to keep an equal distance between all of them like that. And then we'll mount to this same mount. Okay, so I think the next thing we might do is get it secured onto this exhaust mount here. So that bolts onto there like that. And then we've just got to have a piece coming up and into this hole here of this exhaust. So yeah, I'll cut up a little bit of round bar. Okay, so I've made this little bit here. That's just gonna come up around the exhaust under there and bolt to here. So now we've got to have a piece that comes up here and goes along there like that. So I'll get a mark on this and then I can cut that. I'll tell you one thing for free, it's going to be amazing when I have a workbench. I decided to start at this end for a bit just because I didn't want to sort of get to here and then run into issues. So this is where the hot dog is going to mount. So yeah, that's going to mount like there basically. And so that's just got like a rubber block in it, a compression block. And now I can start at the other end and work my way up to it. Remember, it doesn't matter that this is like floppy like this. Same with the other ones. It's the whole exhaust system that makes it rigid. And I might actually put another join in down here so that when the tray's on, you don't struggle to get the exhaust off, but we'll see how we go. We'll get back down there and we'll keep on moving from the other end now. Okay, next bend. So if you can see that, I've just done a mark there. It might be time to put a flange in because the last flange is like ahead of the cross member and I'm just not confident that with the tray on, I'll be able to get the exhaust out. And so I'll get the length of this one and then we might put a flange here, I think. So I'll go and cut that and then we'll tack this to the hot dog and then we'll get two flanges in here. Okay, so now most of those mounts are done. I'll just show you. So it looked really flimsy before, but once you get a couple of mounts in there, they stiffen right up. I've done these a few times. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little, not quite a 90, maybe a 45 off the end. We're gonna get another tack on these flanges here, and then we'll be able to pull it all out and weld it up. Alrighty, so now it's time to unbolt it all off so we can weld it out. 
Get some of that heat shield too, just to put on this fuel tank. I notice from factory down the front, they actually fit it. So if Nissan thought it was a good idea to do it, then I might do it too, I think. So this is still no car builders but a new exhaust. That's so much better already. That's wild how much more quiet that is. God, I nearly, nearly don't even need to worry about the car builders. This is maybe the third or fourth exhaust I've made. I'm not doing the whole system, just like the back half. But yeah, if you want something different um, and don't want to, you know, buy a whole kit, you can always change it from like the last flange back. And yeah, as I say, I've been talking to my engineer and he said that it can dump on the driver's side, it just can't dump on the passenger side, so we'll see how that goes. And so yeah, this is where this video gets a little bit off the rails because my mate who was grinding the concrete in this shed, he all of a sudden said Monday he could come and do it. And so I wanted to take advantage of his free time. And so I had to come down here, get everything out of the shed while I was halfway through that job. And so I ended up doing a little bit of the sound editing at home and I sort of didn't film much of that either. don't think that that carpet's going to be going back in and I think this is going to need some tidying up because that is a mess. I've just got front locker, rear locker, UHF and air compressor. It's a lot neater and safer than it actually looks. It's just yeah because all that's usually hidden underneath the center console. Um, but yeah I think the next step is going to be to give it all a scrub in here so that the sound deadening has something to stick to. All right, so last night, it just got way too dark out here and you couldn't really see anything, so I just kind of got on with it. You can see here that pretty much all the cab has been done. I've just got one more strip left to do at the back. The carpet is in really bad condition. I think I want to replace that. I've looked on eBay and it's only about $200 for a new set of carpet. I think what I'm going to do is just fill out the last few patches in here and order new carpet and
and just bolt my seats back in without any of the trim for now while that carpet turns up. And then before I'd put the new carpet in, I might put the stage two just over the gearbox tunnel and towards the rear wall. So yeah, you can see here that this carpet really is in pretty nasty condition. It's got tears all around the gear sticks around. Yeah, with the effort that I'm going to, I might as well just put some nicer stuff back in. You can see I've gone to a lot of effort in here. And so I wanna continue that and just put nice carpet in. So yeah, that's pretty much it for stage one. And I think I've decided too that I am going to put new carpet in. That old stuff's just too grotty to come back in here. And so what I'm gonna do is just bolt the seats back in. I won't worry about putting the center console back in. I'll just put both seats back in, the gear knobs back on, and I'll just live with it like this until that new carpet comes. That way I'm not pulling it all out again. And then tonight, I am going to do some epoxy coats on the shed floor, which is pretty exciting. So I might show you a few clips of that. But yeah, sorry, this episode is a bit all over the place, but I'm just in that transition period where there's so much to do in that shed before that hoist comes. But yeah, we got the exhaust done, got the stage one done of this sound deadener, and yeah, we'll go and get an epoxy coat on this shed floor tonight. So I'm really stoked because the shed floor is finished in time for the hoist to be delivered which is going to be later this month. That can't come any sooner because it means that I can get the tray on the GU finally. I nearly wasn't going to actually put up a video this Sunday just because of how chaotic this whole time was but I thought you know doing this is better than doing nothing at all. I still have a couple of little jobs to do. I've got to get those Megalife batteries mounted in the back there. Ultimately I'd like to do that before the tray goes on while I've got the access. I've I've got a full set of Bendix brakes that I'm going to be chucking in because these brakes are pretty tired and I have a full set of new carpet going in because when I pulled the old carpet out it was just hideous. But the most exciting thing happening soon is Richard Swindlehurst from Design and Build. He's coming down to Tassie soon and we're going to go for a wheel. He set that thing up with 37s and no canopy on the back so I'm pretty sure he means business. And so yeah some really exciting things in the works but that's going to do it for today. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching till the end. If you enjoyed this episode please like it and if you want to see more please subscribe and i'll see you guys very soon how good does this look I'll just do a bit of a test Wind here, and then we'll Bluetooth go for connection success. Wind for connection.